just to tell you the statistics i completed on 20 books and writing my one more right now then i thought i can't wait till graduation so i thought okay let's do something which can do right now i got the job after one year where my salary was around 45000 per week as an intern that was my financial turning point Hi everyone, welcome to the series Conversation with Kushal once again. Today we have with us one of the extraordinary young chaps. He's just 14 years old and he's earning between rupees 3 to rupees 5 lakh per month working at a startup and he has his own startup as well. So we'll directly hear from the horse's mouth himself. His name is Ayush Singh and firstly Ayush, thank you so much for accepting my invitation and coming up on the show. Like it's an absolute honor for me to interact with you and I'm just awestruck by your achievements which you have at such a young age. Thank you so much for giving me an invitation to come at this podcast. Podcast. Thanks, thanks a lot, man. So, Ayush, can you just give your uh, quick introduction in terms of what you're doing right now so that the audience also gets to know you as a person? Sure. So, my name is Ayush, as Kushal told. I'm currently studying in class 10. I have my boards next year in 2023. I'm currently working as a data scientist and leading the whole data science infrastructure at Replate, which is content media company which is i'd say the best video company out there i'm also building anton which is an ai tech platform which focuses on providing in-depth courses around machine learning deep learning and other technological areas where we are trying to fix the basics of education where uh, we are trying to increase the course completion rate by providing lots of facilities which we can talk about that later on and i have also worked as a ml ops engineer at zenml which is a I think germany based startup where i worked on building some of the core features over there i also worked as a data scientist at artifact in a core member which was a us based company so this is my description over there right i think after I'm looking at right your uh, description or your linkedin profile a lot of people are going to get inferiority complex in terms of how this guy at the age of 14 has worked in three different startups how he has developed this skill set so just let us go back to your past i was going to ask you this question like walk us through your early childhood but <laughs> i think childhood is still going on for you because you're 14 years old and you have your board exams next year but can you just walk us through your entire journey right from let's say you know like one year to 13 years of age and how was this entire upbringing for you what are some of the values you have imbibed from your parents and how have you developed some of the habits which you have which are helping you in your day-to-day -day life today so i'll start off with like i was a very usual and average student till class seven and very funny student as well who used to do what seven. lots of students likes to do right and for example, i used to just play a lot <laughs> For example, playing and doing naughty things at the school, getting getting punished by the teachers and blah, blah, blah. Till class seven. And uh, then I completed class seven and then we got with COVID hit. So previously, if I would tell you my history in class seven and back is I was super poor at computer science. I, was, I used to just remember things up and then just go and sit down and write the examinations. I was not even good at mathematics, which was like my nightmare subject. However, I used to score the decent marks. So I was average in study not even top and all and then i used to try a lot like i tried skating as well i tried guitar as well however i lost interest in both of them i don't know why but it was just like it's done i don't want to do it anymore i was always like always used to explore new things whether it be in worst thing or whether it be in a best things so this is my description of class seven at that time. And then we completed class seven with lots of incidents in my schools. Then the COVID hit at that time when I was in class, I think eight. So everything was like lockdown took place. And I was like, what should we do? And then our family hit with the financial crisis. Then I thought I really need to take up something so that I can take the responsibility of my family and try to revive things again and try to get everything on the track once again. And that time I realized that one thing which I said in my mind that there are no shortcuts. There are literally, I would say, only the hard way we should choose as well as building a strong base. Because my father told like, you have to always focus on building the fundamentals rather than jumping on a lot of things. So build your fundamentals in a good way. That's why I focused on building fundamentals, but I was still not uh, recognized which domain to go in. So I used to search a lot online. I tried out several other things like web development, some programming language, as well as digital marketing, content writing, and a lot of things. But uh, I used to 
tried each and everything i earned it this a very small amount like 100 rupees 200 rupees by affiliate marketing and all in my initial days of when i taken the initiative to take up my responsibility however it was not working out i used to search a lot how to earn money in just 10 minutes or something like that but it was really not working out so i thought okay that's it now what we can do is go to a genuine thing or something which actually works on so i searched about it then the term was coding and then i tried out several domains and again it was like i was not seeing the future so what i saw at that particular point that everyone was going on to web development and i was not seeing really any good opportunities in that by my eyes at that time but now it's huge but at that time i was not seeing any responsible uh, any opportunities as well as my interest was not in that particular domain so i thought ki uh, let's do something out of the crowd which most of the crowds are doing let's do something ai ml most of the people told me you're you're not going to get a job by this because you're still 18 you should have a masters or phd to get a job in this particular domain so i thought ki acha theek hai let them speak i'll break this mind okay i have the skill they only require my skill they only whole lockdown took place everything will be online i can literally do online work very simply if i have that skill hey. then i got started with aiml out there it was like nightmares for me because aiml is something which is at advanced things but then i started okay okay this is an advanced thing but there's some start of that right so i thought ki acha let's focus on something super base which was the mathematics part of it then i devoted my four months in just completing simple topics like algebra 1 algebra 2 trigonometry coordinate geometries like i was just basing up my fundamentals such i these are things which i need to focus on and then build the strong foundation and then i directly jump on things and then i started to get in get the point of views and everything Hmm. Then after that I realized that now I'm done with it. I gave an interview. I miserably failed because they asked literally lots of questions which was out of my mind. Hmm. Then I thought let's go more in depth. I again gone in no so much of that. So just to tell you the statistics, I completed around 20 books and writing my one more right now. Wow. 20 books in machine learning and writing one book for machine learning out there just to have a core depth understanding uh, right. about each and every single topic. How did you learn this AI ML? So like you mentioned that you know like you already read these 20 books and you know like you you're writing your own book itself. So I just wanted to ask like how did you like develop the art of let's say learning AI ML which is a very difficult thing for people like us as well. I would say in this particular point first i just wanted to get in like what exactly they are like what exactly they are so what i used to do literally is go online go on any of the courses like available like machine learning in 10 hours or everything i just used to go over there and try to see that if i'm able to understand or not i used to get a basic grasp of it and then i used to done okay i'm not getting it anything so i'll tell you the fun thing that i was having a small computer okay it is big now but it was very small computer at my back and i used to divide my screen in two parts i didn't knew that how to divide the screen so i searched online so i divide the screen in two parts where on one part my father was like my father was in stock market trading and still isn't he used to do all this in over here at half for half of the screen and i used to do half of the screen my work on the other half and this is how uh, we used to separate our work only wow. one computer but we had two screens uh, which is split in a half wow. from there i thought acha let's do something then i searched online courses and everything but i was not getting so i thought yeah chale let's go from scratch so i searched khan academy then completed mathematics which was the base then i thought okay let's go with the easiest book which is available which was data analysis uh, with python which was uh, maybe our easiest book which not an easiest book but it was a good book so i used to wake up in the morning around 5 am have some tea and then i used to complete at least 30 pages a day at least 30 pages a day it was 600 to 700 pages a book as to complete that book in a 30 days that's how i plan my whole day so i used to complete that goal and then do whatever i want like explore things up so i completed that first book and that first book given me immense you know interest or something like that into ai ml and then i thought acha uh, this is interesting then i again started to do several courses i was not stick at one courses i used Can to do some lot of courses in initially so machine learning by andrew nang is one of one of the courses which i did however i have a lot of criticism for the course but i still have a lot of positive things for anyone who starts off with that course and then i did machine learning a book there was a book machine learning book which was oriley the author was oriley and it was amazing book which i did which was just focuses on practical things and then i did online like mit machine learning course and cs229 by andrew nang again that was the very amazing course launched by stanford online so i completed these types of courses but the books i i have read is 
pattern recognition the bishop one and then introduction to statistical learning with applications in r uh, these two books and another book was understanding machine learning theory from theory to algorithms so these types of book i used to not to, i mean learn the topic from those books which i was interested in not fully completed but at the end i used to fully complete it because i used to just complete the topics what i was interested in so for example i'll take a very simple example like how i used to learn is say for example i need to learn linear regression so i completed the course like a section from andrew dang and then what i did acha this is how it works i got a very basic understanding now i used to go start going in depth acha what this exactly is doing then i used to go through several books and from every books i used to get insightful things out there and then right. that's how you used to learn a particular topic go as much as in right. depth Makes as i can someone who is just starting out like what would you advise and what would you recommend if for example person like me who is like from a finance background if i want to start learning ai ml what are some things yeah. you would advise me in terms of how can i start what are some courses or topics which i should read so that i also get to know about this industry so first is a couple of courses to do which i could recommend is first one is ai for everyone by andrew nang and second is that machine learning course which is 7 years ago which was published 2012 and, and the cost and duration of these, these courses these courses uh, these are i think is at coursera so you can take oh, it for wow. absolutely free okay. by applying the financial aid hmm. so not a big deal but uh, one course which is cso one which is core machine learning course where eventually i teach over there which is i taught a free course as well which is on free code camp with over wow. millions of views and uh, that is around 10 right. hours of machine learning course Uh, so you so you can visit there as well that's also in very lame terms but if you're someone who is like very from scratch you want to learn something so you don't know the ma- even mathematics you just look till class till mathematics then core machine learning is the, is the one which you should look for because i've combined two years of this knowledge is just on coursera course. this is available oh, at anton.co okay. and uh, basically these courses yes. like after pursuing these courses you're seeing like at least people would get the basic knowledge of artificial intelligence and machine learning which is happening in the industry the first two courses which i tell ai for everyone and machine learning by andrew nang is right. something which you can get a basic knowledge but core machine learning which teaches you actually in depth and to the level of something someone to be recognized as a good machine learner or, or a good data sense. scientist so before we also talk about and before we delve into your uh, earnings aspect and you know like what are your sources of income right now i would want to talk something on the uh, turning point of your life is there anything which really changed you as a person or any incident which happened in your life which you know which helped you in order to become more productive become more just uh, be more cognizant of the fact that okay you have some amount of time which you need to use productively so you mentioned about the financial crisis if you're comfortable talking about that part i think that'll inspire a lot of people when i was in class 8 then we hit a financial crisis at that time and it was like okay what should we do now my father had a great loss in stock market and then my mother as well and then we were like what to do now that was a question because of that we had question on can we continue even in schooling or something like that it was damn bad situation at that point then i thought i can't wait till graduation to do something right i can't wait till class 12 to do something right so i thought okay let's do something which can do right now that was my mentality which was of course to help my family financially and and to fulfill whatever my needs are like you know whatever my needs were i just need to fulfill that so i thought okay let's get started with exactly this so that was the eventual I'll, I'll call the turning point because that loss that happened is my biggest turning point as we say whatever happens is for good and that happened is for very very good for me at least so i think that was my turning point to actually get to this online world get to this internet era so what was your first source of income so my first source of income was from content writing where i written a blog around 7000 words of blog on selenium and worked over there for over 2 months and after 2 months i got my first salary which was 1500 rupees wow. this was for 2 months and then how did yeah, this, this shift from 1500 rupees per month to 5 lakh rupees per month as of now what has this journey been like for you there was a company slingshot okay which used to provide internships to teenagers usually Before that as well I used to do small small work like 100 rupees 200 rupees something like that I used to also start teaching at that point where I taught a course at 100 rupees so I used to do these small small things and then I joined Stingshot as a, you know the one which is looking for an internship then they identified me and then I applied over Artifact so they have take, given a very good take home challenge which i knew how to do it and even i knew how to differentiate from other people out there whoever is applying so i have already experimented before because i have applied uh, like experimented a lot of things before as well and i always believe in a fact do something out of the crowd you'll get shortlisted that's what my strategy was always and is always as well so basically i applied at artifact i got accepted over there 
and that was i would say my financial turning point which is i got that job e- after i think one year but before that i was doing small small work so i got the job after one year where my salary was around 45000 per week as an intern that was my financial turning point and then i joined zenml and other companies out there and then my salary started but that particular point was my turning point a financial thing and it can happen to anyone right you don't know what opportunities like a person continuously do from 5 am to from to night 10 pm sit down a computer do things out like what he likes then i got interest and then eventually i got an opportunity which i grabbed it right so this was so a, how did you get into experience. these companies you applied there or uh, they reached out to you how was the entire interview experience initially i used to apply just at artifact how did you apply at zenml so basically what i did they used to give a take home challenge right so they given the take home challenge but in the case of artifact i directly had a take home challenge to do then taken in my resume that directly had the take home challenge i did the take home challenge where they asked me to build something so i built that as well as i added according to my own insights for example they told me to build some sort of you know customer churn type of thing like whether the customer will churn or not this was a basic take home challenge an idea this was a take home challenge and i did that whatever they have told in the tasks as well as i given my own insights own observations own improvements what can be added over there while other students out there did something what they told but i had the creamy point on the top of application and then what i did i go on to my resume section i tweak the things according to what companies are looking for an lp type of thing i tweak the thing and then i got shortlisted for an interview and an interview i was like very having a very casual conversation with that director of ml over there and when i was at the interview i knew okay i'll be getting shortlisted because i was having confident at that time so then i shortlisted but at zenml i saw a linkedin post where they got funding and i thought you okay i really wanted to work on ml ops thing and work as an ml ops engineer so what i eventually did is saw the linkedin post and then directly emailed the founder and then said okay i did a like i tweaked my resume i tweaked my portfolio in such a way that it aligns with the ml ops company and then they said okay let's come for 15 minutes meeting and then i was giving a take home challenge where i completed it according to their needs and according to the what they wanted got it and then i got job so uh, at zenml at replayed or other companies uh, there is what's your work profile at replayed and what's the salary which you are getting at replayed right now currently i'm building some sort of i can't tell much more about what exactly but uh, over there we are trying to using ai to match creators like youtube creators with the right. editors or mm-hmm. anyone out there that's what we are trying to do we are trying to build something in content creation economy which relates to content creators Sending and editors yt jobs right yeah something like yt jobs but uh, here we are also providing the video editing because if you search played then is in the top 10 video agency out there in the world which is from last 5 years where i'm building something in ai over there for editors and creators but not yt jobs is something super different they have the job listings out there but we have the specified editors in our database where we hire specifically and then we have a content creators coming up and then we match that's how we are using ai we are also using ai for hr system and all so definitely these are some of the things which are doing at other played the salary which i have over there in approximately i'll tell it depends on the number of hours i work but it's 2 okay. to 3 right. And uh, <laughs> yeah. what exactly would be your other sources of income apart from this job at Treeplate? Yes, Anton is something which I'm continuously building, and I aim to continue building in 2023. So basically, if we include Anton and my freelancing, that will range to five right. L. And Anton, I think like you're taking your AI ML courses, right? That is the major source of income. Yes, we have a very good plans in future. We have a launch on first January or the first week of January. Currently, we were just pushing out courses or something like that out there. Just to tell you the statistics, we had. over 500 plus students enrolled in matter wow. of only 4 days because in that core machine learning course which we launched and that was a turning point for me to actually continue with anton like okay people are trusting me and then people mm. actually getting job from it that's what okay now let's make more educational products so i thought okay let's go on the next point which is the current which is coming up we have eight courses coming up by me or other people at anton which is priyanshu as well as tushar so we have these people pushing out their courses courses is the basic model however we have a unique model which is you earn while you learn 
So this is a basic unique model. As of now, one of our students at Core Machine Learning Engineering, they after just four weeks, they got a freelancing opportunity for three hundred dollars for completing. So they paid around thirty USD, and they are getting three hundred dollars. So we guarantee that you get three x to four x by our freelancing x because we have partnered with some other companies, and then you get the three x to four x in return. That is guaranteed. Placements things, as well as we help you to build projects which actually works based on our experience. We also have guest lecturers coming up. So these are unique factors. But in future, we will be rolling. out learning kits physically so that it will come to your home as well as we are also rolling out technology like chat gpt in your discord server or in your whatsapp i hope that you know it like what i'm talking about so chat gpt in directly in several channels of yours um ai code helper out there so the betterment of the audience can you just explain what exactly is chat gpt <laughs> we have ai tools which eventually helps you to solve your doubts because i strongly believe that nowadays i've been seeing from 5 days around 70% of whatever my work is involved i'm taking help directly or indirectly with chat gpt so definitely chat gpt will be the unique aspect on reducing the time or reducing the time of which a particular student and ts communicate so that's why we are just adding these technologies these are something which we have so chat gpt is some sort of large language models for having the discussions but with a contextual understanding so what they did i can't go in technical which because they have used reinforcement learning to train the models but overview of this is that you can have a conversation it's just like google but it has only information till 2021 it is like a conversation type of guy who knows everything chat gpt who knows everything who can solve your doubts each and everything but with the contextual understanding as well as i think it has a logic as well because i given the programming assignment to solve and they wow. solved it so i definitely think uh, this is a conversation type of bot but not a conversation which usually just you know by intent or something which is lame which is advanced ai system which right. we can ever think of no i'm sure i mean i heard that they got some 1 million users in less than 5 days itself in less than 7 days itself and uh, there was this trending on twitter linkedin yes. everywhere so i was just trying to see what exactly is chat gpt i was trying to see if it can help me in writing my youtube scripts and instagram scripts so i was just telling them that uh, can you write a script of uh, on instagram about 200 words on this particular topic and they gave me a proper script but uh, i'm not sure like if i start using that what would be the unique way there so if everyone starts using that there should be something unique right so that is something which i fail to understand on this i have my idea like i think chat gpt cannot be used as a only source it can be used to brainstorm things or definitely on brainstorming what exactly on idea you search on google right rather than searching on google i ask over here and i get exact same information to what i want for example i recently had a problem in like understand i given a problem a textbook problem and i was like acha tell me about this okay this particular line why this has a significance value okay so if this has a significance value what can happen however the model failed to answer those depth questions but it really helped me to fit a baseline to make a baseline of the answers which i wanted so brainstorming things with chat gpt is one of the major aspects which i see anywhere right makes sense i think apart from chat gpt just wanted to like ask you apart from chat gpt what are some ai ml trends happening in the economy and what are some other startups disrupting this entire space so if you can give some examples which can you know like some startups or some ai ml trends happening in the industry which will just wow the entire audience it's yeah. not going in too technical but i'd like to start off with a follow alpha signal which is a newsletter which will give you whatever the ai trends are happening every week and yenik mm-hmm. yenik is a guy on youtube which have around per week a video or 20 minutes 30 minutes which explains you the what? everything which is happening currently in ai as of now what i see is the advancement in reinforcement learning using ai to actually solve problems i have seen deep mind figuring out drugs using uh, machine learning and deep learning architectures and these you know large language models which are day by day advancing themselves which is uh, recently chat gpt is launched and other startups i saw a startup which was what exactly they were doing is they were creating funnels the better funnels as compared to ai and you see the customer service out there the startups are integrating creating the chat gpt type of bot over there as well in particular startups like lens up lens are applications which just makes things up which just makes things generative things or maybe something from text to video which is super duper amazing in terms of creating skits in the video like i'm speaking something and then you tell to a model okay create a man who is starting and you want that skit in a particular video so you can text to video that's something which is which is going on but what i feel is generative ai is going too much what is actually going on is reinforcement learning where actually we are building some intelligent machines 
and something which can learn by their own or according to their experience. As well as we are also seeing graphical neural networks, which most companies are adopting it. Some of the key things which are being developed, but in startup spaces, mostly nowadays it's generative AI startups just coming out. Just go on product hunt. The best way to see the startup which are coming on there is product hunt and then subscribe to them, you'll be getting startups of AI directly. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. I've also like heard a lot about the AI ML startups in the creator economy as well, where there are startups where, you know, if you post a long form content, they'll automatically using AI ML, they'll try to take the best 30 seconds and post on your Instagram, where, you know, like they can do content repurposing. There are also various startups in the AI ML space, which will help you in order to find what is trending in the economy. So you get to know in terms of what exactly you can talk on, which is the trending theme, which is there. So a lot of like uh, these startups are coming up and trying to disrupt the space so that's what i've been noticing yeah. at least in the creator economy side of the space also it is being used in yeah. supply chain and fixing supply chain things like what i've seen the problem as of now is what products pricing should be according that's a dynamic pricing but i have seen a, a startup which came up with a supply chain management using ai what they're trying to do is given a product it will automatically market the product as well as fix the routes that supply chain problem fix the routes to uh, find the best routes everything in a particular app for a particular platform that's what i've seen Another one is the one which I was like uh, working on and we just paused because of the examinations which I had, which is Dossi. Eventually is a AI physician assistant, uh, which focuses on answering basic questions. So it, it asks your history of yours, like what is your age? What is a clinical history? And then recommend or have a tree based. Okay, you can have this because you had this. So that will eventually have physician to understand in a contextual understanding. Basically, it is an assistant to doctors, not humans. So we were working on that. You know, like even after talking to you, what I understand is like a lot of AI ML space, like work is happening in the economy. So do you think that uh, this AI ML space, which is there in the future will replace like humans and and uh, like what is your view on AI ML replacing human jobs and what will happen in the future? There are some of the jobs which I see not being completely replaced but something which a rich people where even the middle people will middle class people will not buy it after this technology will come in. Not completely completely re replaced but a middle people who have time but they don't have expertise so they'll not consider hiring for example the one who started the youtube channel who wants to create a video right who wants to create a video and they don't know how to edit there are several tools which does automatic editing like district which we shall mention previously if they have time but they don't have expertise so they'll rather go there rather than paying a editors in much more low price or maybe a script writer because my scripts for Amazon versus Flipkart and the FIFA. So we had the FIFA where we paid the script writer to write the script. And then we had Amazon versus India where we had the GPT take a help of GPT for a script writer take a help from GPT and then written the whole script. Both the scripts are comparably top quality. So the one, the middle class people, if they have time, they'll consider doing it by themselves by using these technologies if they know, if they know the use of that technologies. So of course, not completely replaced, but a certain amount of things will be definitely replaced. Makes sense. And what do you think, like, what are some of the skills which people need to have in order to learn this AI ML thing? Like, by skills, what I mean is that, you know, like, how should a person be or what are some of the habits which they should start building right now so that they are also well-versed with this entire AI ML landscape? So, I recently published a video on my YouTube YouTube channel how could I start over like it was suggestions for you like uh, what mistakes I did which I don't want you to rep repeat it you can yeah. go over there and watch it but eventually just to give you a brief about that one of the thing which I like to tell you that focus on building base doesn't matter what base right. or strong foundation of any subject which you get in in machine learning deeper or data science it is super mm -hmm. important to only work on base so if you go and ask my core students they'll tell ayush the speciality or the legacy of ayush is to focus on only base we have just spent our four to five weeks just only on mathematics part and programming parts mm -hmm. just four to five weeks where most course complete half of machine mm -hmm. learning in four to five weeks we just focus on right. completing the prerequisite and whole one month on completing linear regression which is one algorithm 
because we need to focus on base. So I was trying to build up their base so that they should have the foundation of laying the foundation. For example, if you build something and then you go over, for example, what the people usually do, machine learning, deep learning, jump like hell. They just learn machine learning and then just jump on deep learning, just trying to be cool with deep learning. But I just said, tell, don't do that. You will not get even a single job because I've got a complaints from a lot of people that I'm not getting a job in data science and machine learning. So my question was, do you even know machine learning? Then I ask a simple question. It's literally not able to answer that. Focus on building base. If you want to see, I have built a complete roadmap by devoting my one month, aggregating all my experiences from last two months with the resources. I built a data science roadmap video as well, where you can see the GitHub by going on my channel. Are you saying so there as well? I built this data science roadmap, but focusing on fundamentals. Second is build impactful projects, uh, build something which actually out of the crowd, do it in such a way. Don't do something which everyone is doing. And, and what are some of the background of your students in your courses who are there? Like if you can help us understand that. Most of my students mm -hmm. are in college second year as well as they're working professionals as well as students. I think they are aged <laughs> from 17 yeah. years old to maybe 35 and so 40. You're the young, you're I, the youngest uh, one, right? Of course, there I think we have the mm -hmm. these ranged people and these are the backgrounds. Like they are mm -hmm. in different, different backgrounds, but they eventually got super duper interest. Uh, right. How do you feel students. you're the youngest teacher there and you're teaching to people who are aged from 17 to 35. How do your parents feel by the way? They're super proud of us as well, but they keep uh, telling me, keep it up, do something interesting, right. do something out of the crowd. They still, of course, they're proud and who don't get proud by doing all of these, uh, by seeing her child, doing his child or her, her child, by right? doing all of these things. Definitely they are proud, but they want me to keep doing what I want. But just to tell you, I'm not a nerd guy. I'm, uh, I just don't do this thing. I do a lot of things. Are you proud of yourself? Yes, yeah. I am definitely. Uh, uh, not a question on that. But uh, of course, I need to do a lot of things this right. year, and, uh, which are planned. What are your future plans? And uh, you know, like, what do you want to do ultimately? Like, you're just 14 right now, and you have like almost what? Almost like you have your 70 to 75 percent of your life like is there, right? So, what do you want to do after a point of time? So, just to tell you, I want to grow and turn, and at least have a revenue of seven CR. So, what is the ARR right now? Annual recurring revenue? As of now, it's 20, 25 lakhs. Five. Yeah. Right. Because, because it just started. started right? And you have the pathway yeah, to make started. it to 7 CR by next year by launching various courses. Yeah, I have a Very full nice. conference on that uh, because I figure out this thing, like how right. to do it. Right. Distribution yeah, works. I know, so. I know. And that's why I've been building on my distribution as well. <laughs> but uh, I've not been able to monetize the way you have been doing it. <laughs> so I'll take some tips from you in terms of how do you monetize your distribution. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So tell me one thing, I used to, this is a very philosophical and generic question. What kind of friends do you have? What kind of people do you hang out with? And uh, how do you decide whether to like be friends with this person or not? Like, What's your uh, thought process on that? Because I'm sure you would be amongst the smartest in the crowd and in that age group. So do you even have those kind of friends or like what's your thought process on this? First, I'd say that I'm with uh, the one of the youngest ARVR developer, one of the best web developer which I've ever seen, as well as the programmer which I've seen the best as of now. Definitely, but as well as with people who are learning whom I see they are growing, like whom I see they are growing. For example, what I usually do, whenever someone messages me on Twitter, I just let it be you know, like what Twitter, LinkedIn, anywhere. But I try to understand ki which one guy which I can pick that can be my PA or a manager so that they get to know me. So that guy doesn't even have something like, you know, laptop, just have a mobile. And I try to figure out two things on a guy, whether they are determined or dedicated or what. And the patience and all those things that are external things, which I also take a look, but these two things. And these two things only comes when someone is a financial crisis. And that's why I thought, okay, I have my manager out there who didn't even had a laptop when he joined me. If you talk to him, then he is, of course, uh, like-minded people who are actively build, build the whole marketing plan of Anton. Uh, Nice. Uh, for January. Definitely the guy who didn't have the nice. laptop. So how do you manage your time after doing so many things? And you just said that you're also not a nerd and you are into other things as well. And I know like I've heard about you that you're very, you know, mischievous and very notorious as a person. <laughs> so how do you manage your time into all these activities and all these things? Because I've seen your Twitter and all like the way you tweet and the way you pull legs of other people and all. I mean, how do you find so much time and how do you manage your time between all these things? Uh, sure. I think uh, definitely I have a video on that how I manage my time effectively <laughs> but my time management uh, on this is what I usually do is decide my priorities first of all like decide my priorities as I think the best advice which I read I think even I saw in reels that things I think Elon only told I'm not sure 
that if you plan to do a particular task in this much hours, you can do it actually. Right. So first of all, I set my like what exactly things I have to do, and then I try to prioritize according to that, and then a lot of time, and I have my whole day defined already. Like okay, at this time I have to do this, and that's happened in my notion. I try to define my goals eventually, and uh, uh, what the priorities, like what are some of the my top priorities, and try to like what exactly I have to do this week. Try to plan my week in a milestone based, and try to cover it up. and then i take a total like from monday to friday i do what is planned on saturday and sunday i do what i just want so at that particular moment whether to sleep or do anything at that point i just plan all the weeks out there if i have to go to school or somewhere somewhere like that that is also planned as well as what are things what are the works which are left which are backlogs like totally plan it and then what i do is my interns are there why are the interns for me they are working for me right so i just tell them okay do this work right away because i have around four interns working under me under my guidance so basically if i have some easy task or repetitive task that right. i used to just outsource very very nice i think this is going to help a lot of people in terms of managing their time effectively in terms of setting priorities and trying to outsource the repetitive tasks which are there so that is something which we need to learn from you so thanks a lot ayush for your time i think this was a very candid and fun conversation any last message or piece of advice which you would like to give to the entire audience yes if a 14 year old can do yeah. then why not you very, folks very nice very inspiring man i think you are like after talking to you i am feeling like as if i should uh, you know like just learn about ai ml because that is something which i have not tried my hands on <laughs> and i really need to you know just go and delve deeper into that side of my life as well so i think this conversation has really helped me also to understand that guys yeah like do check out his youtube channel do check out his linkedin and twitter handles and do check out his anton company as well like if you want to learn about ai ml i think that's going to be one of the best places for you in order to start your journeys because like most of us come from finance backgrounds and i think this is one of the most important uh, skills to learn in order to stay updated with what's happening in the technological world so i would def- definitely recommend all of you and including me as well just to have a look and just start something about the ai ml space you never know like you can just you know like connect the dots in the future and you can make good amount of money through that as well so that would be a message from my end to be honest correct agreed so perfect guys thank you so much once again i hope the conversation was fruitful from your end as well and uh, i hope i was able to do justice to your time and thanks thanks a lot for sparing time and guiding the entire audience